Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to our review for Incredibles 2 with the boys Connor. Hello. And Benny isn't here. It's only me oh, and Connor. Psych. What's up? Uh, unfortunately, Ben isn't here. Um, he is a big Pixar fan and uh, we miss you, Benny, but he'll be back next week. So, Incredibles 2, 14 years later, after the original drops, we have the sequel directed once again by Brad Bird, who did the first film, another um, another of uh, another a bunch of films, including, God, I'm, I'm losing my <laughs> mind here, well including Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, and um, Tomorrowland, yay. But uh, he's back to animation, which uh, I think, you know, that's that's his home ground. He did Iron Giants as well. So um, really excited to have him back. And uh, we, we've we reviewed a lot of trailers in the lead up to Incredibles 2. And uh, I don't know how we were all feeling. Um, um, I'm, I'm happy to give you how I felt about it. I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know, was not looking forward to this, actually. Um, I I have a love hate relationship with Pixar, um, largely because for a while there they could do absolutely no wrong, and I really love the content that um, Pixar was putting out. And I'd say around the time that they put out Cars was where I think things started to to kind of show a bit of a a crack in the wall, um, and and. I felt that they were their kind of going for sequels wasn't the best. I, I really love their original um, content and all that. And then, so yeah, it's coming off this kind of love hate thing with with Pixar. I watched the trailer for this and found it to be really boring. Like I, I didn't like the way that they pieced together the trailer. It didn't seem cohesive. It didn't seem like there was a hook. Um, there was very little um, villain in the the trailer. Um, and on top of all that, I didn't like the aspect that this, this was a movie that was being released 14 years later, but occurred directly after the first. I thought that that was a big mistake. Yeah, I felt that was jarring to me. And, you know, Pixar in the past have very, very effectively... Uh, done time jumps for example in Toy Story 2 to Toy Story 3 there's a big time jump but that played into the story so effectively and yeah. actually added a serious emotional punch to the film and it seemed as though to me on face value that that decision um, was going to sort of detrimentally affect the film um, I wasn't excited to, to kind of see oh another adventure with the family stuck in a time you know, vortex, yeah. like a Sim- Simpsons kind of thing. Yeah. You know, they're always perpetually stuck at that age. Uh, and to 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 reiterate what Connor just said, you know, the trailers were weak for this, I thought. It yeah, focused the- so much on the dad and uh, Mr. Incredible and Jack-Jack. And for me, it really, as you said, where was the hook? Why was I going to see this? Other than the brand yeah. Incredibles and, 2. and. A- Obviously, the brand was pretty strong because this had an enormous amount of pre-sales. Like the, it's the smashing it. The estimates for for what this is going to make is going to make on its first weekend are huge. Yep. Yeah, so it's destroying um, it right now. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot of um, brand um, goodwill. But we both Incredibles. are fans of the original. I think that the first one is probably one of the best superhero hero films out there. Yeah, I, I would concur with that. It's I would uh, agree with that. One of those films that. Tends to slip under the radar for me though. Um, I don't think about it until it's in front of me. Then I'm like, oh God, yeah, that's right. I absolutely love this film. Um, and I think that if Ben were here, he would echo those sentiments. Yes. Um, it's yeah, the first one is is so good. And and again, that's a really hard thing to follow up. Yeah. So that was kind of how we were expecting and to, you know, going into this film. And we pick up Basically, immediately after the first film in this one. Well, the 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 last one ends with the underminer or whatever. Underminer, yeah. Um, and this one picks up with the underminer. There's a there's a small scene before, um, that was was kind of put in there for a little bit of context. But um, I'm not sure why it was there. That that seemed a bit odd. Um, but nonetheless, kind of fit into the the um, overall movie. I suppose all right. Um, I'm gonna take a back step. Sorry. Because I feel like we've missed something that's pretty critical in Pixar films. Yeah. 
It was a short. Oh, I, I really enjoyed it. I before, it was yeah, fun. before we get too stuck into the movie, what would you think of the short? Yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was fun. The little dumpling growing up. And yeah. It was cute. Yeah. It cute, was very cute. Fun. Gets you in the mood for Pixar. Yeah. Really wonderfully animated. Beautiful. Pixar is... is they got to a new level, I feel. They have a weird way of making certain things look photorealistic. Like there was a, um, a shot of things being cooked in a wok and it... Yeah, it's gorgeous. Like it looked really, really good. It's the evidently it's the way the light bounces off objects. Yeah, that is a big deal clincher in the realism. Yeah, um, oh, and you can that's you can always tell because there's a sheen on an yeah. animation that it's that randomization yeah. of the way the light bounces. But yeah, the short was fun. It was very cute, and as I said, I I, I love seeing those. And it's it, it Pixar. They are fucking talented, man. Oh, I mean, undoubtedly. And, um, and Incredibles 2, as a film, in terms of the look, it looks outstanding. Like some of the does. hair on uh, Elastigirl, uh, some of the texturing in this, some of the, the explosions. I mean, it is an absolutely beautiful film. It is absolutely beautiful, but they, they managed to hit a level of stylization that I thought was really cool as well. It ties it into the first one. Ties it into the first one. It has that, like, almost kind of comic book, early comic book look, some of the way that the lighting um, or some of the kind of, there's certain scenes where it, it looks like it's just been drawn. Like it doesn't look com computer animated in certain ways. Um, so a really, really good looking film right off the bat. So irrespective of anything else, that was on par with what I'd expect from Pixar. And... Uh the like the retro futurism like all the tvs have that yeah. sort of old 50s look and the monorail has a certain look yeah. i so this love was, that kind of throwback but futuristic i don't know vibe. what period this is meant to take in or w w what you know time period it's meant to be in yeah um i i can't even remember what the first one was there any defined time period i don't for that? think so because there's just there's, a fictional world well, that, and that's kind of what I, I realize is that this is definitely not meant to be our kind of modern world. No, um, yeah, for There's sure. a different aesthetic to it, um, a very cool aesthetic to it, um, but obviously they have a lot of like very modern technology. Um, so yeah, it makes for a cool world, and, and I liked the world building that they had. Um, what about the main uh, plot thread? You know, what... You know, so, this, is, this is undoubtedly a beautiful film, but what about, you know, those concerns about what was this film actually going to be about? I, I genuinely went into it very concerned and maybe it's because of my expectations or maybe because it's genuinely good. I thought it was really good. I liked the way that they went with this. Um, I think there's, a you know, a lot of ways to screw this movie up and only a few ways to pull it off. And I think that, you know, I think they did one of the ways that they pulled it off. I was yeah. really happy with how that went. Yeah, I, th I think it was solid. Um, I have a few issues with some of the um, some of the decisions they made in this film. I think the family dynamics of the Incredibles and what they do with some of the characters and the way Mister Incredible is sort of the stay-at-home dad, which is most definitely in the trailers. I think some of those scenes were so funny, mm -hmm. so effective endearing had drama to them uh and i think especially for some dads that are going to take their kids to see this <laughs> i think they're going to get a real kick out of that and, and yeah be like i know that feeling i know yeah. that feeling well but i thought this film was super lackluster in terms of um the bad guy and and the main thread you know fantastic that the dynamics was great between the incredibles you know had a ball seeing them interact but you know beyond that like what else are we getting here? Like we could do this in a number of adventures with the Incredibles. I didn't feel like this film had a real sort of crux to it. Yeah, I um, I think that the f I agree with you where the family side of it and the um the dad trying to keep up with the kids and all that was probably the strong point of this film. Um. I don't know that I'd say that they failed in the main kind of story plot um, or the, 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 the kind of heroes versus the villain. It was very much less villain-centric 
than the first one. And I think that one of the things that may have happened is that, I don't even know how you get around it, is that you're going to be split off into two kind of storylines. You've got the the dad storyline and you've got the mom storyline. And I think that any time that you split storylines, it's never going to feel quite as punchy as if you had one very clear movement forward. And we talked about that recently with Deadpool. I think this is far better than Deadpool in terms of how they manage it because there's only kind of two um, split offs, but you can only focus on so much. So I, I think that would probably be one of the f- weaknesses of the film potentially. Yeah. I mean, like think about syndrome man from the first one, he is such a good villain. Uh, and this film, like I, I knew, I, you know, I say this all the time on the podcast. I suck at guessing what, who the bad guy is in, uh, oh, you're in the bad. Movie. I'm terrible. You're so bad. I'm terrible. <laughs> I don't even try. But in this one, I picked it from the get-go. And I was like, if I can guess it, then it's fucking generico plotto. So this is something that's kind of come up with a few people in their criticism of the film is that the reveal is actually pretty obvious. It's and weak. That, as far as I'm concerned, is, is probably true. Um, at the end of the day, this is still a kid's film. And I don't think that the kids are going to catch on to that. It's definitely, you know, you're, you're playing off the movie, not the characters necessarily. Because um, you know the way that those kind of reveals are normally meant to, you know, transpire. And, and, and in, at least in this film, there's only so many people that could be the bad guy. Um, so, yeah, I... I, I it just wasn't compelling enough for me. I yeah. wasn't invested in that side of the story. And for me, that made it very lackluster yeah. in a lot of ways. Well, they tried to pull off a reveal. And that's, I mean, if you're going to do that, you got to you gotta really make sure that you're swinging yeah. for the fence. And I, I don't think that they did that. I think that, you know, they did a pretty, um, I don't want to say a poor job because I still enjoyed it. But it wasn't By the, numbers. the reveal. But there's some, there's some, a strength of this film is some of the conversations about the superheroes obligations. You know, if you're born with a certain talent, yeah, are you they, obligated? Like there's some really cool stuff there and there's some great stuff dialogue between, um, you know, pillow talk between uh, Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible, but they separate those characters. And I felt like that was a missed opportunity because yeah. I want to see more of that. So they definitely tackled some kind of political and, and, and societal issues. Um, and quite well without hitting you over the head too much. Yeah, I thought. I thought that, you know, whenever these kinds of things come up in films, I like subtlety. Um, if, if, like providing that the film is not about that subject. If they're trying to weave in, you know, kind of contextual or, or um, societal issues, then I, I like it when they kind of address it offhandedly or when it kind of naturally comes up yeah. in dialogue. I thought that the best case of that was the pillow talk yep. of, and this is in the trailer. It's, it's obviously Elastigirl is off fighting crime and, and he's stuck at home and it's kind of the role reversal. And it, it is um, kind of definitely playing off the, the woman no longer needing to be at home type thing. And their pillow talk was such a good um, display of, of that and, and, and him trying to adjust to the new regime type thing. I thought that was really excellent. Um, some of the conversations between her and um, one of the other kind of main female characters in this, I felt were starting to get a little bit too on the nose. And I felt like, like there was a, a full on philosophical discussion that she had with, so like I can't remember the name, unfortunately, one of the, the sister. Um, I like that, and, and but you know I mean, what? like, this is a kids' film, and I don't, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'd like you to show me, not tell me. Like, I, I don't like, like characters having a philosophical discussion in the middle. For of For me, though, sometimes in animated films, dialogue between characters can just seem like, <laughs> and these guys were like, they seem like the actors were in the same room recording the dialogue. Like sometimes it can just feel very copy pasted yep. and not natural. But all the dialogue in this felt. Like, those characters were in the same room talking with each other. And I appreciated that. Yeah, I mean, like, look, as far as dialogue goes, it was fine. But I just, for me, I felt like I, I didn't need a, a political or a philosophical discussion. And, and nothing to do with the content, 
just literally <laughs> don't need a, uh, any kind of philosophical or, or kind of heavy talk in a kid's film, show me. And I thought the pillow talk, the pillow talk was far more kind of um, uh, laxical and, 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 you know, funny and, and, and but still got the point across, got very much got the point across. Like you could just see, like he was the entire film. This guy is trying to deal with the fact that he's been, you know, stuck with the kids and she's out there, you know, being in the center of attention, which is something that he had before. I I thought that was really good. (laughs) Him trying to be there for his wife and act, you know, supportive. really supportive and happy and, yeah. and all that. Kind of. <laughs> I love that. It there was, was it, some really great moments. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And they didn't shy away from it. They were just like, yeah, this is how this guy yeah. would feel. So it's a hit to his ego. But yeah. uh, listen, it's been a number of years since I've seen Incredibles, The Incredibles, the first one. Did did it have this kind of commentary to it? Because I can't seem to remember it had like that sort of it addressed deconstructing it. the comic book, deconstructing some of the elements you know, um, maybe not deconstructing, but saying like roles and responsibility, vigilante, illegal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a major, major thing of, of the first one. Okay. Um, they had uh, they were sub- subverting some of the kind of common, um, you know, uh, they they had a gender one in there as well. She she makes makes the comment about we can't let the guys have all the fun, um, type thing. And then it was very much there was a, a kind of commentary at the beginning about she's at home and he's out there, you know doing his hero stuff and, and, and that. So, okay. Yeah. You see, I, as I said, it's it was been a number there. of years, but it felt like this one had more of that kind of deconstructing the comic book genre aspect to it compared to the first one. No, I'd say probably on par. Okay. With the cool, first one. cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, but I, I, I over, overall, I liked the, the commentary. I liked the, the plot. Um, there were some scenes that I thought were some of Pixar's best. Yes, yeah, the, there was well. some hilarious stuff in here. Really, really, really funny. Um, uh, I, we can probably talk about that in spoilers. I yeah. don't want to get too heavily into it. Is there anything else that, that you want to talk about before we get into spoilers? Solid score. Not as good as the first one. Yep. I, I didn't feel. I and I missed the spy aspect, I think, of the first one. I remember the first one having a very definitively a spy aspect to it. And this one was more aligned with maybe a superhero film. Um so, you know, I, I actually, you know, Incredibles 2 for me as an overall wrap up is, you know, for me, I wasn't going in with high expectations, but after seeing, you know, all the positive goodwill in all the reviews, um, I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, and I thought that when this film was firing all cylinders was when the family was all together, but it didn't have a, th- a plot that sustained that. Like put these characters and make a short you know, make it make a make a short film on that. That's you get the same I, function out of this. No, I, I think that this definitely needed to be I, I, I don't think you could condense everything that this story need, I needed mean, to tell. Just the fact that these characters worked well together for me wasn't enough. That that's not enough I, for me. Yeah, I, and, and like I said, that was obviously the strength of the film, um, and the plot was kind of sidelined. Um but ultimately I it didn't detract too much from this, in my opinion at least. Um before we get onto spoilers um, any shout outs in, in terms of voice actors? I mean, Samuel L. Jackson as is, is Frozen is, is, is always entertaining. Great value. Yeah. Great to see that character back. I always loved that character. Yeah. The, the two standout characters for me have always been um, uh, him and, and Edna Mole, uh, the, the costume designer. Oh, yes. Who is actually, I found out, voiced by Brad Bird. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the costume designer is voiced by Brad Bird. Yeah, her, her scene was a nice. It was nice to see that character occur. They had to bring her back. Reoccur. She, she's, she was one of the funniest aspects of the first one. She, her little monologue on no capes. Um, yeah, and in this one, I think, <laughs> I think they brought it back with with the same kind of humor and, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was genuinely good. Yeah, I think Craig T. Nelson as Mister Incredible. Yep. Uh, I just. Some of the scenes in here, as I said, the dads will get a kick out of this film. Yeah. I think he really sells that. And I loved the scenes he had with Jack Jack. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think overall, like, really solid across the board. And and the kids, recasting the kids uh, didn't, didn't, or at least Flash. Yeah. I, I know Flash was definitely recast. I'm not sure about the other character, Violet, but not jarring, fit yep. seamlessly. Yep, and 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 going into it, I I talked about how I didn't like the fact that there there was no gap in between the first and second one. I I think I was wrong. 
Yeah, like, me I think too. they pulled it off really well. Like I, uh, I, um, it worked. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if going back to the first one that improves the first viewing because that would be really spectacular to improve on that film. Yeah, I, it makes me want to watch the first one again because yeah. I love that movie. It is really good. Yeah.